Welcome to the math record. Today we'll be covering the CCML Geometry Contest for 2016-2017 J-Division A. Okay, question 1. Find the height of an equilateral triangle with, um, with side 10. So basically, we have an equilateral triangle and all 6 degrees. But equilateral triangle also has all, um, sides as the same length, so it's all 10. So if you kind of cut this, like, right here, this makes, this bisects it. So you get a 5 and a 5, and that makes a right triangle, because that's the height. So the height is also the L2, so you, just, so you could just use the Pythagorean theorem. So 5 squared, we'll call this x, plus x squared is equal to 10 squared. So that gets um, to, uh, x squared, this is 25 and this is 100, so this is equal to 75. So x is equal to 5 square root 3. Because 5 squared 3 is just 25 times 7 times 3 is 75. So that's correct. So the answer is 5 square root 3. Basically very simple. Question 2. A pentagon plotted in the xy plane is translated 4 units, uh, translated left 4 units and up 6 units. What's the resulting change in the sum of the x coordinates of the vertices of the um, pentagon? So, um... Imagine you have, like, a pentagon, right? Let's just draw it, like, right here. Etc. So you have point, uh, 1, 2, 2, sorry about that, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now you're going to move it, all, uh, 4 to the left, so you have it, like, right here, kind of. So now this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't know. It's not just drawn to scale. But basically, um, you're going to um, move 4 to the left and 8, 6 up. Since uh, going up or down does not change the sum of the x-coordinates, the only x-coordinate is when it's moving right or left, so only 4 is the one changing. So since uh, each point is moving 4 to the left, so it's moving negative 4, because it's going left, so you're going negative. And there's 5 of the points because it's a pentagon, just multiply by 5, and the, the change is just negative 20. Basically just that simple. Question 3. In the diagram below, um... Line AB uh, is a diameter of uh, circle O, and CD is tangent to, um, to the circle at D. Find uh, angle C, and where uh, AD is also uh, 115 degrees. So, this, uh, basically, since you know that AB is, is a diameter, that means uh, one side of it has to be 180 degrees. So you have, uh, so AB has to be, um, the arc AB has to be 180 degrees. So 180 minus 115 is equal to 65. And to get the angle of C, it's just an inscribed angle, so it's just the bigger angle, which is AD, which is, um, which is, uh, because this is 115, this is 180, right? So BD is, uh, is, um, 65. So AD is 115. Minus BD, which is 65, and then you half it. Just, that's the formula of how to do it. So basically, uh, you have 1 half times 50, which is equal to 25. So um, angle C is 25 degrees. Um, question 4. Using the same diagram at number 3, if AB is equal to 12 and BC is... Um, equals to 8, determine CD. So, uh, to find the, um, basic, to find how to, uh, get the value of CD, it's also just, like, an inscribed angle lines property. So what you do is that, um, you, you have the, um, line of, uh, AC, which is, uh, AB plus BC, which is equal to 20, times BC, which is equal to 8 is equal to CD squared, basically. So then you have 160 is equal to CD squared. So CD is length is, um, square, is 4 square root 10. You just need to know the formulas for these. For like 3 and 4, you just need to know the formulas. Point, um, A, four, negative 4, 1 is rotated 270 uh, degrees clockwise around the origin to point A prime. Determine the coordinates of A prime. Okay, let's kind of draw a diagram of this out. So you have negative 4 and 1. So you have somewhere around here-ish. 
And you had to go clockwise. So you guys had to go this way, basically. So, um, if this is, let's kind of just draw this out, like kind of like a rectangle-ish. So you have something like here. So you have negative four and you have one. So if you're going to have to rotate this around the origin right here, basically, then you're going to have to imagine this uh, rectangle moving at this point while this point goes to the x-axis. So you're going to imagine that. So this one will go four up and then um, one here. So your new point will be right here. So it moved 90 degrees. And then it's going to go the same thing again. So it's going to be four here and then negative one here. So it's going to be right here at um 180 and then uh 270 is going to go down here so it's going to be uh negative four negative um negative one and it's going to be right here so your uh your coordinates is the x coordinate which is negative one and then this is the 90 that's 180 and this is 270 so clockwise so you already went 270 right here. So basically, now you just have to find the point. So that's negative 1, the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is negative 4. So it'll be negative 1, negative 4. So basically, questions like these, just kind of just use a, um, just kind of draw a picture. Question of, um, what is this? Where are we at? Question 6. Uh, if a triangle is uh, dilated by a factor of uh, 1 and 1 third, um, what, by what factor is the area increased? So, imagine, uh, if you have, like, a, like, a triangle, right? And let's say it is, like, basically 2, 2, 2 or something. Then, um, when it means dilated, it, it means you're just multiplying by that factor. So, if this is 2, 2, 2, then this is, uh, 3, uh, 1 and 1 third, so that's 4 thirds. So you're multiplying every single side by 4 thirds. So you have like 4 thirds times 2 is 8 thirds. So each now is 8 thirds. So this has the concept of like similar triangles. If a triangle is similar and it has like um, uh, kind of similar, it has similar side lengths. So let's say we have the similar, this is equilateral and this is x, right? Now let's say this is side length x and this is area a. And this is uh, side length a, no wait, um, uh, some kind of constant k times x, then the area of this is just um, k squared times a, basically. So, uh, if the area if of the original is, let's just say, x, right? Then basically, um, uh, if the triangle dilated by 4 thirds would just be 4 thirds squared times x. So 4 thirds squared times x divided by x, because the factor it increased, would just be 16 over 9. So the answer is just 16 over 9. So whenever you see a question like this, just square whatever the side length is uh, multiplied by. It's basically that simple. Question 7. Uh, calculate the area of the quadrilateral with uh, consecutive um, vertices 0, 0. Okay, let's kind of grab this out. So you have 0, 0 right here. Uh, 8, 2. So, right here. Um, 10, 9. And negative 2, 14. So, right here. Not really drawn to scale, so yeah, something like this. Okay. So, what we're going to use is the shoelace theorem. This theorem just basically gets us the, uh, the area of, of a polygon. That's in a Carcinian plane, so it gives us the area like this. It basically just uses matrices. So uh, what we're going to do is basically we're going to write out the matrix. So we're going to start with the rightmost point. So I always use the rightmost point. So the point right here is uh, 10, 9. And then from there, um, I kind of go um, counterclockwise. So the next point is negative 2, 14. And then the next point is 0, 0. And then the next point is, um, is 8, 2. Now let's kind of move this up. I'm kind of running out of space. All right. We don't really need the diagram anymore. And then, um, since you have four points, technically you need five points. And then you're going to write the last, 
the last point is going to be the first point that you started with. So it's 10-9. So it loops back around to the first one. And then basically from here, you kind of just do like make a matrix of this, make a matrix of this, make a matrix of this, you know. So every single two, you go down, you base... So you make a matrix with these two, and then these two, and then these two, and then these two, basically. So you have uh, 10 times 14, which is 140, minus 8, minus negative 18, so it's plus 18. And then you have 0 minus 0, then you have 0 minus 0, then you have uh, 72 minus 20. So um, just minus uh, 20 here from here, so that gets 120. The 18 plus this, uh, that gets 90. So, uh, 120 plus 90 is 210. And then you basically, uh, whatever is the result, multiply by a half and you get the answer. So, 110, 210 divided by, uh, a half is, I mean, multiplied by half is just 105. So, the area is 105. Question 8. Point, uh, S, um... Six zero is rotated three hundred. Uh, I mean, one hundred and thirty five counterclockwise about the um about the origin to point S prime. Determine the coordinate of S prime. So we're gonna have draw a diagram, and you have six right here. Zero, and you have to go counterclockwise. So this way is clockwise. So counterclockwise is this way. Because you just gotta think about a clock. So clockwise, counterclockwise. You know. So basically, you're going to go um, 90 degrees. So we're going to do the same method again. So basically, you have 6, 0. So you have 6, 0. So if you had to go uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise, you're going to end up right here at 0, 6. And then you're going to have to move 45 degrees. So you're going to have somewhere here. This uh, 90 plus 45 equals 135. So you're going to be somewhere right here. So you just have to find that coordinate where it's like 45 degrees. So basically, you know this length has to be 6, right? So you kind of just could make a triangle. So you know that length is 6, right here, when you make that triangle. So that's 6, and this has to be 45 degrees. So if this is 45 degrees, and this is 45 degrees, right, that means both of these side lengths have to be the same, and you could use the Pythagorean theorem. So now you have x squared plus x squared is equal to 6 squared. So that's 2x squared is equal to 36. x squared is equal to um, 18. So, uh, x is equal to 3 square root 2. So, um, at the x coordinate right here, this is the second quadrant, so it's going to be negative. So, it's going to be a negative uh, x and a positive y. So, you got to have uh, negative 3 square root 2 and 3 square root 2 as your coordinate. So, that's the answer for 8. Uh, question 9. In the figure below, um, S Q R E is a square and Q R T is an equilateral triangle. If S E is four, find a uh, S T squared. So, kind of draw this out. So we have a square, and um, everything is kind of length four because it's Q R T is an equilateral triangle. That means all side lengths are the same. So this is four. 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 Basically, so. Let's just write 4 here, so we, we, we just know everything's 4. So based on that, um, we just need to find st, so write this thing. So basically, uh, we just need to find this length right here, and then this length right here, and then we basically just uh, add to this length, and then we get, like, uh, using a tro using the Pythagorean there, and we get the answer. So let's kind of draw that out. Yeah, we need this. So, what is this length? Uh, this thing is just halfway through, basically. So, if this is, if you cut at high, um, a height down here, both of these would be the same. So, if this is 2, right? Because this is a right angle, and you're making, like, a height. So, this would be 90. That means this is also 90, and this is also 90. So, that means if this is H, this is, uh, length 2, then this is also length 2. So, I already got one of the heights. And this is length 4 right here. And now we just need to find the height, because this is the height, and then the height kind of moves up here, so it's the same uh, length. So basically, um, we know this is 4, and we know... We know this is 4, and we know this is 2, so um, using the right, right triangle right here, we have 4 squared, uh, sorry, 2 squared, 2 squared plus uh, height squared is equal to 4 squared. 
So we got 4 plus h squared is equal to 16. So h squared is equal to 12. So h is equal to 2 square root 3. So that is our length for the height. So this one is 2 square root 3. Sorry about that. 2 square root 3. Because this is 2 square root 3, so you just got to move it up. So now we have that entire length. So we have, now we could just use a right triangle. So it's just 4 plus 2 square root 3 squared plus x squared, and then you square root is equal to the length of the hypotenuse, of that hypotenuse, basically. Uh, sorry, I don't know why I write x plus 2 squared. And then you square root it, and you get the length of that of, um, of st. But they want to give you st squared, so basically you just square both sides. So basically, uh, the squared of a square root just means this number. So we just need to find this number. So let's just expand this out. So this 4 times 4 is 16. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8 square root 3. And then it's going to do it again. So then it's got a uh, 8, 16 square root 3. And then 2 square root 3 times 2 square root 3 is just uh, 12. And then 2 squared is 4. So if you span this one out, you should get 16 plus 16 square root 3 plus 12. And now you add them together, so you have 16 square root 3. That makes 16, and that's 16, so that's 32. So your length for, um, for number 9, for st squared, is 16 square root 3 plus 32. Number 10. In the diagram, uh, t x is equal to uh, 4n minus 2, and u x is equal to 2n plus 5, and v uh, x is equal to n, and w x is equal to n plus 1. Find uh, n. So basically, um, this is also an inscribed um, uh, lines angle property. So basically, what you need to know is that like the opposite sides kind of multiplied together is equal to the other side. So uv times xw is equal to t x times uh, xv. So um, uh, tx, which is 4n minus 2, times uh, xv, or vx, which is equal to n, is equal to uh, ux, which is 2n, plus 5, times uh, uh, wx, which is n plus 1. Okay. So we got 4n squared minus 2n, is equal to 2n squared, plus, that's 2n, that's 5n, so that's 7n, plus 5. Now you subtract it, so you get 2, get everything to one side, so 4n squared minus 2n squared is 2n squared, and then minus the 7n, so you get 9n, and then minus the 5, so you get 0. Um, so you get 2n and n, and this one is minus 5, and this one's plus 1. So that's 2n squared, that's negative 10, that makes negative 9, and that's negative 5, so that factors out evenly. Um, n cannot be uh, negative, because vx is already n, so if n is negative, you can have a negative length, so uh, this is not possible. So n has to equal 5. So the answer for number 10 is 5. Number 11. A regular octagon has perimeter 48. Find its area. So, its perimeter is 48. So, if it's a regular octagon, that means all its side lengths are equal. So, uh, if there's 8 side lengths, so just divide by 8. You get a, um, you get, divide by 4, that's 12, divide by 2, 6, yeah, 6. So, each side length is 6. Um... If you kind of know what the area of a of a octagon is, it's basically just um, one plus square root two times the side length squared, basically. So, I mean, sorry, it's two plus two plus one times square root two times the side length squared. So that's the area. You kind of just want to memorize this because in CCML, they kind of just use the octagon a lot of times. So you know the area of the formula uh, of a regular octagon, it will save you a bunch of time rather than proving it. So plugging 6 to x squared, that's 36. 36 times uh, 
2 is 72. So you got 70, 72 plus 1 plus square root 2. And then you get 72 plus 72 square root 2. So that's your area. Uh, number 12. In the diagram below, a circle is inscribed in QRST. If three of the sides are 11, 14, and 20, right here shown, find the length of the remaining side. So, let's kind of like draw this out. This one just takes a, a little bit of logic. It, it's, it's not really that difficult. You kind of think about it. So, I'll show you why. And then you have something like this. Sorry, it doesn't look exactly like it, but let's say this is uh, 11, right? This is 14, and this is 20. So we need to find this length, uh, RS. So um, what it is is that let's kind of like, we have a um, line, right? And we find, this is the tangent point, right? Right here, and there's a tangent point right here, and there's a tangent point right here, and there's a tangent point right here. Basically, um, what they say is that if you have a regular circle and you make a line, you make a line, uh, sorry. Make a line through a circle right there and then make a tangent point. And then these two are tangent right here. These two lines are exactly the same length. So this line here and this line here are exactly the same length. Which makes sense because if they're in the same point and you go to that line, tangent right here and tangent right here, wouldn't logically just make sense to be the same length? So basically that's the same idea. So um, if we have something here is tangent tangent, that means two, both of these lengths are the same. Both of these lengths are the same, because uh, A and B don't have to be equal. And this and this has to be the same. And uh, this and this has to be like the same. So if we add opposite sides, so it's A plus uh, 20 plus 11, which is 31, right? So that's A plus B plus C plus D. Then we just have A plus B, which is the, that side, which is 14, plus C plus D, which is just this side, which is X. So you just have 31 minus 14 to get that side length which is equal to 17. So in question 12, what you need to know is that if you just add opposite side lengths, uh, they, should be at, they should be equal to each other. So QR plus a TS is equal to QT plus RS. Um, so the answer for 12 is just 17. Question 13, uh, find the angle uh, E where A the um, C is 190 degrees, and AB is equal to uh, CD. So um, this is also another, another inscribed angle question, but not. But now you have to actually solve for AD, and you have, you need to find uh, BC. So uh, if we label, uh, let's kind of like draw this out. So we have something like this, and they're saying um, AB is equal to CD. That means technically this arc right here is the same thing as this arc right here. That's what they're telling us. So we have this. So if ADC is equal to 190 degrees, that means this side length has to be a 90, 190 minus x. This 190 minus x plus x equals 190. And the entire thing has to add up to 360 degrees, right? So uh, x plus 90 minus x plus this x plus this side length right here has to equal to uh, 360. So that is uh, 190 plus x is equal to 360. Plus that question, plus let's just say that's the question, what, that's that length, just question mark, is equal to 360. So the question mark is equal to um, 170 minus x. Okay. So this thing right here is 170 minus x, which makes sense. So that's 360, the negative x counts out with the positive x. So we, now we just need to find E. Uh, angle E is like this E right here. To find E is basically just finding AD minus BC and then halving it. So 190 minus X minus parentheses uh, 170 minus X is basically just 190 minus 170. Because a negative or a negative X is basically just a positive X so they cancel each other out. And then you're going to have half of that. So that's 20 times uh, a half which is equal to 10. So 13 is just 10 degrees. Number 14, find the radius of the circle inscribed in a triangle with lengths 5, 5, and 8. So we have a triangle and a circle inside it, basically. So that's what it means, a, a circle inscribed inside a triangle. 
with lot, uh, lengths 5, 5, and 8. There's actually just a formula you need to know for you to solve this. So, it's called an inscribed rate, inscribed circle. And there's two types here. There's the inscribed circle and there's a circumscribed circle. An inscribed circle is when a circle is inside the triangle. And a um, circumscribed circle is when the circle is uh, outside but goes through every single uh, like vertice of the circle. So for inscribed, it's pretty easy. It's just basically the area of the, uh, it's basically just the area of the uh, triangle all over its um, semi, all over its, um, no, two times the area times it over its perimeter. Or you could just say area over its semi-perimeter because that also makes sense. Is, um, like if you just divide this by two, you don't have this here, then you could, whatever is divided is the reciprocal, so that's two over. So it's basically the same thing. But you could just have two times the area times the perimeter. So basically, um, uh, to find the, uh, we already got the perimeter, which is just 5 plus 5 plus 8, which is just 18. So now we just need to find the, um, area. If you have, to, an easy way to find the area without doing all the math, like making a height and stuff, well, it's still gonna take a lot of math, but, uh, you have something called Heron's formula. Formula, okay. This area, uh, this formula just basically gives us the area of a, um, of a triangle, if we're just using its side lengths. So what you do is that first you're gonna um, add all the side lengths together, which is five plus five plus eight, which is 18. And then you're gonna divide that perimeter by two, so that's nine. Then you put a square root, and then you put that nine in ready. And then you're gonna multiply, um, multiply nine by like three more numbers. So the first number is just nine minus eight, which is one. And then nine minus five, which is four. And then nine minus the other five is four. So it's just the semi-perimeter times, uh, times the three numbers, and those three numbers are just uh, the semi-perimeter minus each of those side lengths. So um, this one, you kind of just kind of do each one individually. So square root 9 is 3, square root 1 is 1, square root 4 is 2, and square root 4 is 2. So that's 4, and that's um, 12. So the area is just 12. It basically is just that simple. So it's 2 times the area over the perimeter, which is just uh, 5 plus 5 plus 8, which is 18. So, uh, take out the numbers already, so 2, 18 divided by 2 is 9, divided by 3 is 4, divided by 3 is, uh, divided by 3 is, uh, 3. So your area, so the circumradius, which is right here, let me kind of draw this out for you. So you have a radius right here. That radius is equal to 4 thirds. Also, I just realized this right now, but, like, if you kind of just draw the height right here, since it's isosceles, Technically, if, uh, this would be the same length, so this would just be 4, and this is a 3, uh, a 3, 4, um, a 3, 4, 5 triangle, because that's the Pythagorean theorem, so this height is 3, and that's just 12, uh, divided by 2 times 2, so this area 12, so that's probably an easier way instead of using the herons, but you could use either way, and that you'll get the answer of 4 thirds. Question 15, uh, in the diagram below, AC is perpendicular with DE, and AB is 4, and BD is 8. Let's kind of like draw this out first. So we're going to have something here, and we have something here. So they say um, AB is 4, and they say uh, BD is 8, and uh, BE is um, 6, right? And they say uh, we just... And we need to find the area of the circle. Since this is perpendicular, right? We just, uh, technically, we're going to do the exact same thing of what we did in 14. But now we're just going to have to make a triangle. So when we're going to make that triangle, we're just going to find the area of that. We got to find the uh, circumradius. I mean, the, uh, find the air using that, we got to find the area of the, um, we could use this to find the circumradius, and then we can find the area. Like how I said before, there was a circumradius and the inradius. Now we're going to use this for the, um, for the um, circumradius. So uh, as I said before, it's like basically an inscribed uh, angle and uh, lines question. So the so opposite sides multiply each other is equal to each other. Each other. So six times eight, which is forty-eight, uh, we'll call this x is equal to four times x. So basically, x is equal to twelve. Okay. So this is twelve. And now we just had to make a triangle. 
So, uh, let's just say we have a triangle like this, right? Basically. So, uh, we just need to find the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse, and then we could use those, uh, three side, uh, the, uh, the four plus the twelve, which is sixteen, and this side over here and this side over here. These two sides, and what, that last side, which is the third side, to make that triangle. And we could use the circumradius and get the, um, the, basically the, uh, the, the circumradius, and then we could get the area. Sorry about that. Um... So, 4 squared plus 8 squared is 16 plus 64. And then you square root it, that's 80. That's square root 80. Square root 80, um, you could divide a 4 out. And that makes a 20, so you could divide another 4 out. So this, so this is 4 square root 5. So that's 16, that's 30, and that's 50. That's 80, yeah. So this side length is 4 square root 5. So remember that. 4 square root 5. And you have 8 squared plus 12 squared. 8 squared is 64. 12 squared is 144. So, uh, this is 208. Uh, then we have square root 208, basically. That entire thing. So, square root 208 is... Square root 208 factors out to, like, you could divide a 4 out. So, you have a square root 4 times a square root... Times, uh, 52. And then, uh, you could take another 4 out... And that gets 13. So you have 4 square root. It's 4 square root 13. So this side length is 4 square root 13. And this side length is just 4 plus 4. Which is 4 plus uh, 12 which is just 16. So um, based on that. Uh, we just use the. Air, getting the circumradius. Which is just. Um, the th If the side lengths are A, B, and C. Then it's just A times B. Multiply all the side lengths together. All over 4 times the area. Basically. So, um, we have the side length, which is, uh, right here, 4 squared 5, times, actually, let's write this a little bit smaller. 4 squared 5, times 4 squared 13, times 16, all over 4 times the area. The area is pretty simple, it's just this base, which is just 16, times the height, which is just 8, and then divide by 2. So, uh, that's just 8 times 8, which is 64. So times 64. So, um, this 4 cancels out with this 4. 16 times 4 is 64. So you could cancel out this one. So, um, basically the, uh, circumradius is just square root 5 times, uh, square root 13, which is just square root 65. And, uh, area, so you have a, like, uh, a, a point right here, and then you have a circumradius. And then the area of, basically, a circle is just pi radius squared, and a radius is, uh, square root 65. Just just pi uh, 65. So you have an area of 65 pi. And that's basically how you find the, um, the area of a circle around a triangle. Uh, number 16. A point R is reflected about the line Y is equal to X. And then reflected uh, um, about the line Y is equal to 2X. The resulting uh, R's coordinate has is 2 and uh, Negative 2, 1. What are the coordinates of R? So let's kind of make a point. So we have uh, Y is negative 2X. And then Y is uh, X. Sorry that it doesn't go through the origin. So you have negative 2 and 1. So you have a point right here. So when it was basically... Uh, it's, it's reflected by Y is equal to X first. And then reflected about uh, Y is equal to negative 2X. So this is Y equals negative 2X. So we're going to have to make like a perpendicular line. That goes through um, that point, that negative two one, and goes that's perpendicular to y is equal to two x, and then we basically find the other point on this side, and then from that point we gotta do the exact same thing, but from that point to y is equal to x perpendicular. So let's just focus on uh, y is equal to two x and uh, negative two uh, one. So the perpendicular line of y of y is equal to two x is y is equal to negative one uh, half. Um, x, and it has to go through the point negative 2, 1. So you plug in a negative 2 in here, that gets 1. So it's perfect. So this goes through that point. So we have a point right here. So basically, this goes through the origin. So uh, you have negative 2, 1, and it goes through 0, 0. So uh, you had to, from negative 2 to 0, you had to add 2. 
So the other side would just add another 2 because basically it's the same thing, right? So if you add t you minus 2 to the side, so you have to add 2 to the side. So this right is a 2. So you have to add 1 on this side, so you have to minus 1 on this side. You have to minus 1. So uh, the point is uh, negative is 2, negative 1. So that is our other point. So our point is right here is 2, negative 1. Okay. Now basically from that line, we just need to make a perpendicular line to y is equal to x. And then that goes through 2, negative 1. And then we could reflect it off. Uh, to the original point of R to get the original point, which is R. So we just need to do that. So um, perpendicular of y if y is equal to x is basically y is equal to negative x, and it has to go through uh, two negative one. So that's negative two. So it's plus one, basically. So uh, it has to go through negative x plus one. So it's got to go through like right here, and it's perpendicular to that line, basically. So, uh, where does y is equal to negative x plus 1 intersect y is equal to x? Because we need to find that point right there. So basically, um, we have negative x plus 1 is equal to x. And we have 2x is equal to 1 half. So we have x is equal to 1 half. So that coordinate is 1 half. So since it's y is equal to x, so this one's also 1 half. We can also check it that y is equal to negative x plus 1. So negative one half plus one is one half. So this is the point right here. So we're gonna have to draw that line again. Okay, we have this, sorry, right here. So that's perpendicular. So we have this point and this point, which was reflected from here. So this is the original part R. So we just need to find R. So uh, this one is one half, uh, one half, one half, one half, and this is two negative one. So from one half to, to get to two, you got to add um, 3 over 2, so that's 4 over 2, that gets 2. So from 1 half, now you have to minus uh, 3 over 2. So 1 half minus 3 over 2 is negative 2 over 2, which is just negative 1. And then from 1 half, uh, you got to subtract, um, subtract a negative 3 over 2, so that's negative 1 minus 3 is negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So instead of negative uh, 3... Subtracting negative 3 over 2, you got to add, you have to, I mean, subtract 3 over 2, now you have to add 3 over 2. So, 1 half plus 3 over 2 is uh, 4 over 2, which is just 2. So, uh, the coordinates of R is basically negative 1, 2. And that's basically how you do it um, by, uh, by hand. If uh, you just kind of find perpendicular lines and just kind of like move the coordinates around. Uh, number 17. The area of a circle circumscribed about a regular hexagon is 13 uh, pi. Um, find the area of the circle inscribed in the hexagon. So we have a circle circumscribed around a regular hexagon. So let's kind of draw a hexagon out. So looks like this. Then you have a circle that goes through all those points. Sorry that the picture is bad. But basically, um, let's kind of just draw the diagonals for this hexagon. Okay, these are all the same area. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is. So since the area of the circle is, um, I mean, yeah, the area of the circle is 13 pi. Since the uh, formula is for a circle is pi radius squared, that means the radius is equal to square root 13. So that's how I know. So since a hexagon is basically, um, they have a point right here in the middle, Technically, it's going to be that square root 13. So this side length and this side length, all these side length, the six side length, these, all these, um, I mean, not side length, all these um, kind of half diagonals is basically all square root 13. But we only need to focus on one right now. And since it's a hexagon, right, it's just made by six equilateral triangles. So this is just 60 and this 60 and this 60. So this is square, the side length is square root 13. So, um, so you have a triangle right now and you have square root 13 as all its sides. And uh, find the area of the circle inscribed in that hexagon. So now you kind of just like want a um, circle inside that's touching all the side lengths. So, 6 square root 13, okay? So this is basically pretty simple because if it's a circle and it has to go through every single, it has to touch every single side, that means it has to touch it equilaterally. 
So basically, it's gonna add, it's gonna touch the midpoint of each, every single like line because it makes sense logically, right? So then basically, you just have to find that midpoint. So we have a triangle, and it's sixty degrees right here, and this is thirteen square thirteen, and you just want to find the height because the height will give us the radius because then it's just gonna go around basically, right? So um, if you know your uh, unit circle, which is just your thirty, sixty, and ninety degree triangle. Then basically the opposite side of a six of a sixty degrees is just square root three of two uh square root three one half of square root three times the um the the hypotenuse which is square root thirteen. So the side length, the height is just square root thirty nine all over two. So now so the radius so the radius right here is equal to square root thirty nine over two. Okay, so now we just need to find the area inscribed inside the hexagon. So we already got the radius, which is now we just need to have pi radius squared. So pi times uh, square root thirteen, square thirty nine squared is just square is just thirty nine, and two squared is four. So the area is just uh thirty nine uh pi over four. Basically, that's just that simple. You just need to know your uh formulas for like in radius and circum radius. In radius, I just call it in i and r. It's basically just area, uh, two times the area, divided by the perimeter. Meter. Okay. The circumradius, which I call sir, C I R, it's just the uh, if it's side length A, B, and C, it's just uh multiply all the side lengths together, divide by four times the area, and that's how you basically get it. And you could basically just get the area from there of the circle. Okay. And the area and the perimeter are are, base, are are the triangles, not the circle. So don't mix those up. Um, 18. Uh, line A, B, and C, D are chords of a circle intersecting at X. Okay, so let's kind of... We have a line, and another line. Call this A, B, and we'll call this C, D. And they say this is X. Okay. So, uh, A, X... To bx is 9 to 10, so let's kind of use a variable. So we have uh, 9a, and this is 9, uh, sorry, 9a, and this is 10a. It has to be 9 to 10 ratio. And it says cx to xd is 5, uh, 5 to 8, so we'll call this 5b uh, and 8b. So it's 5 to 8 ratio. If ax, uh, B, X, B, C, X, and X, D are integers, what is the minimum uh, possible length of A, B? So, like I said before, um, since these are inscribed like line, angles and lines, uh, the, the product of opposite uh, sides has to equal the same. So, this is just 40 B squared. Is equal to um, 90 A squared. So, using that, uh, divided, 40 divided by uh, 90... It's just uh, 4 over 9b squared is equal to a squared. And then square root both sides, so you get 2 square root, 2 thirds uh, b is equal to a. Since uh, since a has to be an integer and b has to be an integer, uh, and you just need to take that 3 out, b just needs, the smallest amount of b has to be a multiple of 3 for, it, for a to be an integer. So a multiple of 3, the smallest multiple of 3 is just 3. So if b is equal to 3, then a, this is 2, uh, a is equal to 2. Basically. So what's the minimum uh, uh, possible length of AB? AB, since A is equal to 2, just plug it in here. So this would be 18. And this would be 20. And uh, add those together. So you get line AB. And you get a length of 38. Just basically just that. Just that simple. Question 19. Um, a belt whelps or wraps around two wheels with radius 13 and radii thir 3 and 15. If the distance between the center of the wheels is 24, find the um, length of the belt. So you have a circle here and you have a circle here. I draw a line and then you draw a line here. So basically, um, if you kind of just have this line right here on top and you move it down, like you just transition it down, like just... Think about it mentally, they have the line, and you kind of, like, move it down, such that this point right here, uh, like, moves to the center of the circle. So, basically, what it ha what it makes is that you kind of, like, make a line, like, 
right here. Right? So, sorry, it's not that line. But it's basically like this. But since you're moving it down, it's basically this is 9 degrees, this is 9 degrees, and these are also 9 degrees. So it's a rectangle. So, since this is the radius of the circle, that's 3. We'll call this x. Since it's a rectangle, this is also uh, x, and this is 3. This is what we call as an external tangent, basically. So since this is the 15, this is 12. So an external tangent is basically um, if you have a line that goes through, uh, uh, that, uh, that hits two circles at only one point each. And in and an internal tangent is basically the same idea, but now it's going to go this way. So it's going to hit this point and this point. So internal tangent kind of makes a diagonal and... Um, and external tangent is kind of still outside. So, and uh, using a external tangent, you can for this case it's just an external. So just think about it this way. You kind of just draw like a rectangle, and you have a like a, a right triangle right here. So since they said the distance between them is twenty four, right? So this is twenty four. Then this is twelve because uh this is fifteen. So fifteen minus three because this rectangle is twelve. So using the Pythagorean theorem, which is twelve x plus x squared is equal to 24x. So x squared, uh, that's 576 minus 144. That's 432. Okay. So uh, square root of 432. Okay. So let's factor 432. 432 is uh, 4 and 108. Um, it could go to 4 again. And that's 27. And this could go to 9 and 3. Okay, so it's um, 4 times 3, which is 12, 12 squared 3. So x is equal to uh, 12 squared 3. Okay, so 12 squared 3. Or if you just know, and based on that, if you kind of know your, uh, you, you, this is basically just a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Because if you have side length x, the 30 degrees is just x over 2. And the 60 degrees, the other side is just x square root x uh, times square root 3 divided by 2. So that's basically it. Because since this is like uh, the 12 degree... 12, right? 24 is... Uh, uh, 12 is half of 24, which makes sense. Because x is, this is half of it. So this one is the 30 degree mark. So based on that, this one's the 30 degree. And this one right here is the 60 degree. Right? So, because if we want to find the belt, we got to find the entire length right here of that circle and this uh, circumference right here, and then add the two lines, basically. So, okay. So, imagine, okay, so you have another line right here. It's showing the picture. So, do the exact same thing on the other side, and you kind of have this. Right? So, that's, it's basically the exact same image. Just flip it around, basically. So, just have this image flipped over this uh, the distance between the lines, you get the exact same image. So, this is 60 degrees. This is 30 degrees. So, let's move this up a little bit. I need a little bit more room. Okay. So, basically, um, since this is 60 and this is 60, right? That means, since the entire circle is 360 degrees, so it's just 360 minus the 60 and the 60 here. So, that's only a 2... So 360 minus 60 minus 60 is uh, 240. So uh, the circumference of here is uh, 240 all. Sorry, 240 all over uh, 360. Um, times the circumradius of this circle. The radius is five, so uh, the circumference is 30 pi. And then uh, the circumference of this one, since this is made by 90 degrees and a 30 here and a 30 here, and basically another 90, right? So these are the right triangles. So it's 90 plus 90 plus 30 plus 30. So that's also, um, two, so this is 240. So this side right here is 120 degrees. So you have 120 divided by 360 times um, the circumference of this one, which is just 6 pi. So this one is equal to 2 thirds. And this is equal to 1 third. So the circumference of just this one, the side right here is 2 pi. And this is 2 thirds, so divide by 3, divide by 3 is 10, so this is 20 pi. Okay. So we have those two. We have uh, 27 pi and we have, uh, I mean 20 pi and 2 pi. Delete. Okay. 
So now we just have to add everything. So if this is x, this is also the same length x. So it's just 20 pi plus the 2 pi plus uh, both the x, both of the external tangents, which is just 12 square root 3, and there's two of them, so you multiply by 2. So you have 22 pi plus 24 square root 3, and that is the length of the belt. So that's the answer for uh, question 19. Question 20. Um, circles with center A and B and sharing radius uh, AB are uh, shown below. What overlapping area, what overlapping or region R? Find the area of R. So let's kind of draw this out. Since they say that the ra their radius is overlapping and they're both going through the, um, the center of the points, right? Then basically they're the exact same circle. They're just over, they're just overlapping. So you draw a line here, line here, and line here. Since this is length 6, right? Since it's radius of this circle, this is 6. And this is line 6 because it's the radius of this circle. And since they both share radius 6, this is an equilateral triangle. So this tells me that this is 60 degrees. Uh, uh, all these are 60 degrees. So it's an equilateral triangle, basically. So it's an equilateral. That's all you need to know. So um, since this is 60 degrees, right? You kind of just want to focus on um, this area, including that arc inside. So, when you have this, you're basically looking at right here. Oops, I don't know why I keep doing that. So, that's 60, right? And you want to find the area of that circle. So, I mean, that, uh, basically that arc. I mean, section. So, basically, um, it's 60 over 360. Because that's the amount that it, the proportion that it's covering. Times, uh, pi radius squared, the area of the circle. So, pi radius squared, which is 6 times 6. So, um... Here and here cancel each other out. 6 is 1, 6. So this is 1, 6. So the area is just 6 pi. The area of this portion is 6 pi. So this entire thing is 6 pi right here. So what we want is that we want the, um, this, only this area, basically. Right? So, because then we have to add 4 of them. Because you have 2 of them. So you, you have 1 here, you have 1 here. One here, one here, and one here. So you have four of them. So you got whatever that area, you multiply by four, and then you add the area of the equilateral triangles, and you get the area of the overlapping region. So basically, now we have uh, the area with six pi, right? So the area of a equilateral triangle, we have the six and the six. So basically, as I said before, there was a, like, the 60 and the 30, and it's x over 2, right? And it's x square root 3 over 2. Basically, the area would just be x squared, square root 3, divided by 4. And then divide by 2 to get this area, and then multiply by 2 to get this area, to get the entire area. So the divide by 2 multiply by 2 is basically the, basically can't show each other out. And x is a side length. So the area of an equilateral triangle is x squared, square root 3, divided by 4. You might just want to know this formula just for the CCML, because it occurs a lot. So um, since the area is, since the side length is 6, the area is just 36, square root 3, divided by 4. So divide by 4, that's 9 square root 3. Okay. So the area of this region is uh, 6, uh, 6 pi minus uh, 9 square root 3. So to get the area of all four of them, you just multiply by 4. And then you have to add back the area for the equilateral. So equilateral triangle is 9 square root 3, as I said before. So and since there's two of them, there's this one and this one. Basically, just multiply the area by 2. So 9 squared 3 times 2 is 18 squared 3. So this is 24 pi minus 36 squared 3 plus 18 squared 3 is minus 18 squared 3. So the area of the overlapping region is just 24 pi minus 18 squared root 3. Basically, just that simple. Well, that basically covers everything for the CCML Geometry Contest for 2016-2017 Division A. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next math record.